the intention for today's Mass is for Vincenzo Patruno and family. We will be offering a Mass for special needs for the preservation of peace and justice. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. My friends, that we may better enter into these sacred mysteries of the Holy Mass, let us call to mind our sins and our need for the mercy and forgiveness that God alone can give us. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God of peace, who are peace itself, and whom a spirit of discord cannot grasp, nor a violent mind receive, grant that those who are one in heart may persevere in what is good, and that those in conflict may forget evil and so be healed through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever, amen. A reading from the prophet Joel. Gird yourselves and weep, O priests. Wail, O ministers of the altar. Come spend the night in sackcloth, O ministers of my God. The house of your God is deprived of offering and libation. Proclaim a fast, call an assembly, gather the elders, all who dwell in the land, into the house of the Lord your God, and cry to the Lord. Alas, the day, for near is the day of the Lord, and it comes as ruin from the Almighty. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all who dwell in the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. Yes, it is near, a day of darkness and of gloom, a day of clouds and somberness. Like dawn spreading over the mountains, a people numerous and mighty. Their like has not been from of old, nor will it be after them, even to the years of distant generations. The word of the Lord. The Lord will judge the world with justice. The Lord will judge the world with justice. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart. I will declare all your wondrous deeds. I will be glad and exalt in you. I will sing praise to your name, Most High. The Lord will judge with justice. You rebuke the nations and destroy the wicked. Their name you blotted out forever and ever. The nations are sunk in the pit they have made. In the snare they set, their foot is caught. The Lord will judge the world with justice. But the Lord sits enthroned forever. He has set up his throne for judgment. He judges the world with justice. He governs the peoples with equity. The Lord will judge the world with justice. Uh -huh. 
of this world will now be cast out and when I am lifted up from the earth I will draw all to myself says the Lord the Lord be with you a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When Jesus had driven out a demon, some of the crowd said, by the power of Beelzebul, the prince of demons, he drives out demons. Others, to test him, asked him for a sign from heaven. But he knew their thoughts and said to them, every kingdom divided against itself will be laid waste and house will fall against house. And if Satan is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For you say that it is by Beelzebul that I drive out demons. If I then drive out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your own people drive them out? Therefore they will be your judges. But if it is by the finger of God that I drive out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his palace, his possessions are safe. But when one stronger than he attacks and overcomes him, he takes away the armor on which he had relied and distributes the spoils. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. When an unclean spirit goes out of someone, it roams through arid regions searching for rest, but finding none, it says, I shall return to my home from which I came. But upon returning, it finds it swept clean and put in order. Then it goes and brings back seven other spirits, more wicked than itself, who move in and dwell there. And the last condition of that man is worse than the first. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you. One of the movies that is currently in the theaters and is uh, very popular is, is an yet another, uh, another uh, sequel to the Exorcist uh, movies. And certainly, it's a fascinating topic that Hollywood just loves. It plays well very visually. The reality of the personal spirit of evil that we call Satan is undoubtedly one of the teachings of Christ. And even he performs exorcisms and gives his, his apostles the authority to do the same. Yet it has been said that the greatest triumph of the devil in our time is to convince much of the world, including many believers, that he doesn't exist. The reality is that the devil's effects are most powerfully and commonly felt, not by the cinematic drama that we kind of see in movies, but rather by daily sinfulness. That is the place where the devil really does his work. In the gospel today, our Lord gives us one of the many teachings he gives in regard to, to the reality of the evil spirit, and in a very, very interesting and helpful, I think, parable about the post-exorcism effects that the, pur the, the purpose of the exorcism is not merely to leave a house that's clean and empty, like a, like a, a furniture store showroom, like you find in Ikea or someplace like that. Th a room that has been, uh, a soul that has been cleansed of, of, of a demon, like a room that has been 
staged for for a television show or or in a, a, a furniture store showroom is meant to be lived in and that it's insufficient simply to be rid of a demon without actually bringing a good spirit into that house, into that heart, into that soul. In other words, the importance of living a life of faith and avoiding the possibility or lessening the possibility of temptation causing us to fall into sin, which is the devil's true goal. And we are asked by Christ to bring good spirits into our spiritual life in equal force of the way we seek a good material life here on earth. That means to live a life of faith and everything that flows from that. So to cultivate the habit of prayer, to cultivate the habit of good works, and what flows from that, study and knowledge of scripture, meditation on the word of God, a concern for those around us which is expressed in effective, compassionate ways, to really be involved in not only ordering our own life but creating a world in which, as Peter Morin, the famous companion of Dorothy Day in the Catholic Worker Movement said, creating a world in which it is easier to be good. And that would include doing the works of peace, so much needed in our own time, in our own day, and this very day, in so many places of the world, the, the wars that are grabbing the headlines and the wars that have been going on nonstop and barely make it onto page 17 of the newspaper in many other parts of the world. We are called upon to, to fight the influence of the evil spirit of Satan and all its effects. So to, to do what we can to, to avoid violence and war, to fight against the reality of evil in the world in the form of illness and suffering, of decay, and yes, sin itself. Let us pray that we will do our part to inhabit the house that God that Christ has given to us in our baptism, our heart and soul made heirs of heaven, with an active spirit of faith and everything that faith needs in order to continue to grow and bear fruit. Let us pray. For the church, especially at this time of the Synod in Rome, and her pastoral leaders. May the Lord continue to guide them in their deliberations, enabling the people of God to live lives of service and ministry. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear. Hear For our elected and appointed officials, may the wisdom of God inform their efforts toward creating a more peaceful and just society. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear. Hear For those places in the world today that are racked by war, both those that are familiar to us and those that are unfamiliar to us, and including the places in our own lives where violence and dissension may rule, that there may be the healing presence of God's Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That each of us may populate the house of our soul with prayer, good works, and everything that goes with that. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for all the intentions that we bring with us to today's Mass, for the sick, for the needy, for the dying and the deceased, and in a particular way for the intention of today's Mass, for Vincenzo, Petruno, and family, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Almighty Father, hear the prayers of your church that we offer today through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice from your hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all this holy church. May the saving sacrifice of your son, the King of Peace, offered under sacramental signs that signify peace and unity, strengthen, we pray, O Lord, concord among all your children, through Christ our Lord, amen. We will offer the fourth Eucharistic prayer for special occasions, Jesus who went about doing good. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us, Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners, and he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so, with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. <laughs> and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, 
we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of christ that has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your son in whose body and blood we have communion bring your church o lord to perfect faith and charity together with francis our pope and robert our bishop with all bishops priests and deacons and the entire people you have made your own open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened make us serve them truly after the example of christ and at his command and may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom to peace and justice that all people may be raised up to a new hope remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. Teresa of Avila and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ for the kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of the peace of Christ. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Bestow on us, we pray, O Lord, the spirit of charity, so that sustained by the body and blood of your only begotten Son, we may be effective in nurturing among all the peace that he has left us, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. We invite you to remain with us for a period of Eucharistic adoration, concluding in a few minutes with benediction of the most blessed sacrament, the sacrament of charity, the sacrament of peace.
Given them bread from heaven, having within it all sweetness. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you gave us the Eucharist as the memorial of your suffering and death. May our worship of this sacrament of your body and blood help us to experience the salvation you won for us and the peace of the kingdom where you live with the Father and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. The divine praises. Blessed be God, blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Blessed be the great mother of God, Mary most holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, virgin and mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. May the heart of Jesus in the most blessed sacrament be praised, adored, and loved with grateful affection at every moment in all the tabernacles of the world, even to the end of time. Amen. 